Hi everyone, SoCal Marine, another quick and unedited video. I am going to quickly show you guys on a piece of paper how the Mercury switch packs work. This applies to just about any CDI ignition system. 70s, 80s, 90s, a lot of the outboards, uh, even later than that, they use the same principle. This specifically uh, is an 80s Mercury Mariner style switch pack but I'm gonna just run through the basics with you. Um, and as mentioned, you can apply this generally to just about any brand of outboard. Um, okay, so first things first, you'll notice that there's two sets of lugs on this pack. Um, on the Mercury's, um, the top ones over here, um, you'll see there's a blue and a red. Okay, so the blue is usually 0 to 2,000 RPMs, and this is from about 2,000 up. Okay, I'll explain this in a second. Um, the black and yellow, this would be the kill wire. And this is only used on engines that use more than one of these. This is kind of like a sink. I'd use sink. It's actually called a bias but it's the, it synchronizes the, the two packs. So if you have a V6 and you have two of these, uh, one of them, one of the bunch of wires will have a yellow jacket and one will be black. And I'll explain in a bit. Okay, so this is kind of two sort of separate topics I'm gonna cons uh, talk about over here. Okay, so firstly, what do you have at the top of your engine? Okay, we have a flywheel. I'm just gonna draw a little circle over here. And this is the flywheel, all right? And the flywheel spins and it makes electricity, okay? Now there's another little circular thing that sits inside the flywheel. It's called a trigger. Sometimes it's called the timer base, depending on which one you're... I'm just going to go TR over here. Okay, I'm going to get a little bit zoomed in here. And <clears throat> usually the flywheel will have yellow wires two or three um, and they will go to a rectifier which is usually it's either shaped like a little triangle or a little square with a corner missing and that the only purpose for that thing over there is to charge your battery okay you can completely ignore these wires when you're ignition troubleshooting. They have no effect. The only thing that could throw your spark out is a bad rectifier. But we'll just ignore this for now. The yellow wires that come off the flywheel are only for charging a 12 volt battery. Okay, nothing else. It, it, it does not have anything to do with the ignition system. Okay, now the other wires that come from here, you'll have a blue one which obviously goes to the blue, and then there will be a red one, okay, which comes to the terminal here, this is red, okay. And those are generally all the wires coming from the stator. Okay, I should say stator, I don't know why I wrote FW for flywheel, okay. Um, and there might be an additional black wire, which is for a ground. Okay, so I'll just put that there. Sometimes they just ground internally, um, but sometimes they have a separate black wire. Okay. Uh, so how the stator works is, um, on the Mercury's, you'll see that uh, the blue and the red wires here are split between RPM ranges. And it's kind of different, um, but basically... All the stator does is it supplies power. Okay, as mentioned before, the yellow wires over here are only for charging the battery. Okay, it comes out as AC, usually 35, 25, 35 volts AC, which is that little squiggle. It gets converted in the rectifier to DC, which is the straight, and it's able then to charge your little battery in your boat. Okay. That is what the yellow wires do. They're mostly yellow on motorbikes. They're green. Uh, sometimes there's three. 
The bottom line is that those wires are just for charging batteries. Okay, I'll stop repeating myself. Right, now we're back to the pack. The blue wire and the red wire here supplies electricity into a capacitor that just sits in this box and it gets stored. It's a temporary, very high speed charge discharge system. That's why it's called CDI. It's a capacitor discharge. Capacitors can charge and discharge in milliseconds, like so fast, which is why they're used on outboard ignitions. Okay, and they are they are they sit inside these packs. Now this is an old school pack. You know, sometimes the wires don't have these terminals. Uh, they just kind of come out. But the principle is all the same, all right? It really is. So I'm going to now forego the stator wire. Um, but for all intents and purposes, what happens is when your RPMs reach about 2,000 thereabouts, maybe 2,100, um, the system stops using the blue wire and it moves over to the red wire, on Mercury's especially. This doesn't apply to the other brands, okay? For all intents and purposes, we can just treat these two wires that Mercury has decided to work on two different operating ranges as just a sort of a, a power source for the pack. The stator has no intelligence. The only thing the stator can do is, is put out juice. It doesn't know where it's going. It doesn't know what cylinder it's firing. Its primary purpose is to just provide power. It has no built-in intelligence that affects timing or any of that it just pumps out juice okay so that that gives you an idea of how stators work and that's across all outboards all right now we're going to move on to the trigger over here i'm sorry my drawing's a little small now the trigger is where the intelligence of the system comes in all right i'm going to make this a little wide angle here so you guys can see now bear in mind this is an example this is an older pack where you have actual lugs with nuts that you screw the wires onto. A lot of the newer packs uh, will just have all these wires kind of soldered on the inside and they, they don't have all these little nuts. They just kind of come out as a bunch. Sometimes they're bare, they might have a socket, but trust me, the principle is identical. Okay, there's just different ways they do exactly the same thing I'm talking about. Um, okay, so what does the trigger do? This is where it gets very cool. Okay, so we now know that the stator is continuously filling the capacitor which is hidden inside these weird packs okay um, but it doesn't really know the, the the power is just getting pumped in there all right the trigger is what i would call the intelligent part of the system the trigger has the i'm going to just maybe i'll just make a little bit of a bigger one over here just so that it's easier for you guys to see okay there's the trigger okay the trigger has areas it 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 it, it has the intelligence of when to tell this pack to release its energy that's been stored by the stator so this is the guy that's gonna pretty much do the controlling okay now i might I'm just going to use this as an example, okay, but look over here. What a lot of people don't realize is that you see how this is green, green and white, green and red. These are going to go to coils. So I'm going to write coils over here and I'm talking primary. It's the little green wire that screws onto the side of the coil, okay? And I'm going to actually try and draw them over here. They kind of look like this on the older ones. They could look completely different on your engine. All right. So let's just go. I'm going to go to green and green and white. Okay. And we are going to call these. Now, I might be wrong with the cylinder numbering for this exact pack. But if I do remember correctly, it could possibly be cylinder three one two i'm not a hundred percent sure it doesn't really matter okay now the trigger over here you'll see there here it says violet white brown okay these wires are coming from the trigger okay and i'm just going to draw them randomly like this and i'll put one up here okay now 
These two over here, these two are like a couple. They're a pair. As are these two, and as are these two. And what that means is that I don't know how best to explain this, but presuming I'm correct over here, and this is cylinder two, you can see that its wire is connected to brown. Now I should have probably looked this up, but I'm just going to write two over here on the trigger. And I'm going to write one over here and I'm going to write three over there. Okay. And what this does is the trigger actually has magnets. On this example, this is a three cylinder engine. That's why there's three pairs of these. Okay. Uh, these also came in a four cylinder pack for the 70, 80 and 85 horsepower models. Um, so they would literally have two, four, six. They would have had a, another set of terminals and the pack would have been a little longer. But you can treat these, these channels in the pack are almost like old VHS or sound channels. That's all these are. It's getting a signal in from the trigger it's coming from this wire it's coming in to these terminals that are labeled violet white and brown all at different times and all it's telling is this is in and this is out this is in this is out this is in this is out i'm sorry this video is long-winded but this is a little uh quite a lot to swallow for some people that are just trying to diagnose and you know that are new to this stuff so i am repeating myself just to try and kind of imprint all the trigger is doing is for example two over here is sending a little electrical signal to this terminal going release to this terminal which in turn is going to basically fire on cylinder number two all right and as the flywheel is spinning, it's going to hit one. And then one is going to come through the white wire and it's going to go, hey, release the power to cylinder one. And then the flywheel is going to spin and the violet wire is going to have a little pulse and it's going to go, bing, release the energy that's continuously being stored in this whole system. And so as you start to run the sequence through your head, the stator is continuously refilling the capacitor. The trigger wire is going... Ping, 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 ping. And every time it hits one of these terminals, it's going to release that energy to this coil, to that coil, and to this coil. And so the three wires that come from here control the timing and everything. Now check this out. If you're trying to see whether you have either a bad pack or a bad trigger, you can treat these pairs as channels so you can literally take these two wires and connect them here and put the wires that were here over here you can swap between any of these channels over here and you can test to see because usually when these packs do blow one of these channels will be blown so you might have spark on cylinder three and you might have spark on cylinder one but let's just say cylinder two has no spark all right so since you know one is good, you can take the wires from one and you can put them on there and you can put two on one. If, you, if the spark has now moved, if one is now dead and two is firing, then you know that the problem isn't in the pack. It's, it's in the trigger wire that's telling the pack to fire. If you swap the two wires and um, the problem stayed on two, and, and these wires were working through one, then you know that this channel on this pack is bad. All right, I'm gonna run you through that again just to kind of get you guys to try and understand. So let's just say you have spark on cylinder one, three, you have spark on cylinder one, but two is dead. Okay, there's no spark coming out of the spark plug. You can take the wires from these two uh, from one and you can put them on this channel and you can take the wires that were connected to here and put them over here all right um, if you now do have spark over here then this pack is working on this channel all right that tells you the the pack is good so by swapping the wires between these two banks for the ver various cylinders if the problem moved 
then the problem is coming from the source, which is up here. So it's almost just like having three pairs of headphones. That's literally all it is. You've got three sets of headphones on these green terminals, and you have three sets of audio input on these terminals. All right, if you can't hear anything on these headphones, right, and you swap the wires from there to there, and you now can hear something on these headphones, then you know that your amp is working over here, right? But if you, if the problem moves, if you now don't have sound on this, then you know that your input sound or your headphones are probably not working. Probably the input over here. You need to trace it back. And so, you know, that's, like I said, this is an old pack. The newer packs will have all these wires coming out. Um, and you can look this up. You know, you could literally just look in your wiring diagram to determine because at the end of the day, if I go look on the man, the Mercury manual, it'll tell me that violet is firing a certain cylinder number and white is firing a certain cylinder number and brown. The intelligence of this entire ignition system is only coming from the trigger. These channels don't know which cylinder they're going to and they don't know where they're getting their signal from. They're, they're kind of deaf and dumb. They just go, hey, I got a signal, I'm outputting it. I got a signal, I'm outputting it. I got a signal, I'm outputting it. So you can treat each of these sort of channels as separate. You see they each have their, this actually is nice because it has the clear uh, sort of sealant on it or whatever it is. So you can, you can kind of see. It's just a little bit difficult to understand when you open this up for the first time and there's all these wires looking at you but it's actually quite easy to understand how this all works um, so a very common thing that blows these packs is the kill wire which is the black and yellow on the mercuries um, you have to take this wire off the pack and you have to attach it to a multimeter lead and you have to put the other multimeter lead to ground and you have to turn the key on lots of times and if you even see more than about 300 millivolts, which is 0.3 volts of power coming through this pack, like one volt is going to take the pack out for sure. Uh, and it does happen. It really does happen. It could be up in the ignition switch. Um, there could be wires rubbing against each other. Trust me, it happens. Uh, that is the first thing I would check uh, just to be sure. You know, you might be on the edge of starting to blow a pack. So anyways, um, another thing, if you don't have spark on any of these cylinders, um, disconnect the rectifier and regulator. The yellow wires, uh, take them off the, the unit uh, so that they're just dangling free. Make sure they don't touch anything and see if you suddenly have spark. Because a bad rectifier will go up through the yellow wires into the stator and take out all the juice it's supposed to be supplying on these two terminals. Uh, so that's another thing. Now, just lastly in mentioning, uh, the trigger wires move every time you accelerate. And so it's common for these wires to break down over time, especially on the older Mercs. All these other wires, everything else is pretty stationary. But the trigger wires, every time you advance the throttle and reduce, it rotates to, to give you more and less timing. And so those wires are continuously being worked. So I would say that's a common culprit. Now, there are tests you can do. There's Ohm's tests. On the CDI book definitely check those out um, they're kind of entry level but they can maybe give you some idea if there's a problem but the best way to do it is to get the DVA adapter and um, do tests and I'll maybe just show you a video in a later time but um, this is just giving you guys an idea of what these things do and how they work because um, if you just swap the green wires over here um, then all you're actually doing is just kind of testing the coils and your timing's going to be off because the timing doesn't come from the output it comes from the input so if you're purely just trying to test coils then you could just swap these wires but it's best to just do things in pairs you know and then go from there uh, especially because coils generally don't fail as often uh, in my opinion as packs and triggers do you know sometimes they go for years and sometimes boom they're just suddenly dead so 
anyways thanks for watching guys it was very long-winded but um you know i hope this clears up how these packs work across the outboards and uh, i hope you guys can troubleshoot more effectively with us thanks